did I have to fall for it? Even a little woman doesn't love me at all. Fifteen years, they are my head for a devil of a woman I was better off. I said, Jim, we're told Hitler was anti-Jew. Then, Jim, why did Hitler have a Jewish doctor? I seen Jim gulp slightly. Robert, he replied, I've been asked that before, and I don't have an exact answer for you or anyone else. I don't believe him, quite frankly, but he said it. He continued, I can only surmise that the Fuhrer wanted and deserved the best doctor he could have, and this Jewish doctor was the best. I smirked at Jim and said, bullshit. I sat up and was on the edge of the chair, and what I said destroyed this man's argument so completely that he will avoid it for the remainder of his life. I said, Jim, Hitler said the Germans were the master race, and you mean the master race? There was not one freaking doctor better than this Jew Jewish doctor? Is that, what, is, that your, is that what you're telling me, Jim? Jim looked defeated. But I was not done with the Hitler point. However, I had no intention of, of dragging it out. I said I'm not going to go into who funded Hitler, even though in 1929 he was broke. And where does one get tens of millions of dollars at? Mm, we don't have to go into it. I just have a simple question for all of you. For you, Jim. For you, Martin. For you, Owen. And for you, Sam. One question about Hitler. Man, I ask you this with all seriousness. The room was silent. You could feel the tension. I set up at 3 a.m. tonight. Five gangbangers broke into your home and drugged your wife and children outside. And if they were beating the dog shit out of them and raping them, what would you do if you were asleep on the couch and you woke up to this? All, all four of them looked at me like, what the hell? Martin looked at me with wide eyes. I could see he was angry and yet unsure of where is, is, is this going? He said, I'd go outside and kill every last bleep bleep one of them. I said, I know you would, because my blood is in you. Michelle and your girls would expect you to come outside and either kill for them or die with them. You would die together like a family. I raised my voice to Martin and said, you know, Martin, you could escape out the back door on, on your four-wheeler up into the mountains. Nobody would know. I said, you have a gun next to you right now. It'd be no problem to blow your brains out and avoid the hell altogether. Now, I'm asking all of you, what would you think about any man that would refuse to fight for his family and die with them when they're being brutally murdered, butchered, and raped right outside the mother effing door? I said, any man who will do this is not a man and should never die so the world can see what a complete loser and chicken shit coward looks like. And I said, this is exactly what your Fuhrer, Hitler, did. I said, you know, Jim, to show the vast stupidity of the Hitler horse and the CIA pe pe people, when I posed these questions to them on BitChute, the best they could come back with was to call me a Jew. Now, I've spoken out against the Jews far more than these bleepity bleep mothers will ever do. I said, Jim, you told me before that you believed Hitler escaped by submarine to South America. He nodded and then said yes in a very soft tone. I said, Jim, 100 yards from Hitler's bunker in Berlin, the evil and sadistic Red Army was murdering, raping, and torturing men, women, and little children. And this pathetic excuse of a man hid as this was going on. And then, Jim, either one of two things happened, Jim. Either he did escape, or he blew his brains out after taking cyanide. To my surprise, Jim mustered up a rebuttal, and his rebuttal was so weak and twisted, it is the epitome of the Hitler horse. Jim said, Robert, the Fuhrer and his people did not want the Russians to have his body made a mockery of. You know at another time in history, Jim's answer would have been worthy of receiving a blade right through his heart. Right through his heart. Instead, I took the breath from this man with the truth. I said, dude, do you really understand what you're saying? I leaned closer, and I decided not to yell, but I grumbled. 
And I said, what about the motherfucking mockery being made of the women and children who were being brutally raped, tur tortured, and murdered right outside the bunker, Jim? I looked at the young white man, and I felt sympathy for him. He wants to know his heritage, his race, and history. And it's hard when all you've ever heard is how bad you are for being white. It's hard to find the truth when there is a non-stop propaganda war and campaign of outright lies to conceal and suppress the truth. Sadly, many of the people who think or believe they are on the right side are actually on the wrong side, and they are instrumental in helping the lies continue and even thrive. Now, when do these people put on their adult pants and start facing and accepting the truth? When do these same white people stop chasing lies, fables, speculation, and rumor? When I pulled up, I parked my old battered Jeep across from Jim's new $60,000 truck. And Jim is the kind of guy that when he goes to the bathroom, he figures there must be gold in his waist. You're looking at something far more sinister than what most people could imagine on their most and creative day. There is a great search for the answers to the mysteries of this world and the current things that we are facing. The lost names of God, the sun, lost and hidden books, the search for hidden treasures of knowledge. If you got time, I got some treasure for you. You can download it, put it in MP3 format, listen at your own leisure, but please do listen. You'll be the wiser when all said and done. There are no pictures or videos in, in this present presentation, just treasure for those who seek knowledge. You know, sometimes a male lion will run down a hyena or even multiple ones and kill them. He won't eat them. He's making a point. And after killing them, he'll urinate on them. That was the preview. Now we get to it. I drove my old 1994 Jeep up the mountain and finally reached the town of Newcastle. I drove through the town in about a minute. It's clan country. It's a quaint town of about 1,500 people. It's on top of the mountain, about 45 minutes from where I live. I was passing through the town of Newcastle in what we call Craig County on the way to the community of Paint Bank. I was going to shoot my gun at Martin's house. Winter's coming and there was still a chill on top of the mountain. I thought, damn, I didn't even bring a jacket. I came up on Martin's driveway. His driveway was about a half mile in gravel. No problem. Been down it a few times, but still, every time I start down that driveway, it's like, how can anybody have a driveway this long? I got to his house, and I was expected. There were other cars there, and I knew this. Martin and his wife live in a house on many acres in a remote spot in the mountains of Northwest Virginia. Martin and I grew up together. In fact, I've known Martin since we were little boys. My aunt has a picture of Martin and myself eating corn cob, corn on the cob on the back of the porch in our old neighborhood when we were just three years old. Martin and I were born just a few months apart. Martin's mom is my aunt and I'm very close to her. She's a fine and good woman. I guess in many ways I'm closer to her than I am my own mom. Martin never ran the streets like me, nor did he get into trouble like me either. However, as we aged, we stayed in touch and would see each other and hear about one another. Martin is my cousin. I pulled into his house. The big tires on my old Jeep spun up some gravel and I had arrived. I got out and was greeted by Martin's wife. Her name is Michelle. She looked pretty, standing on the porch, underneath of a rebel flag as it swayed in the light mountain breeze. She called me to come on in. I've known Michelle for 20 years. I like her. She likes me. I smiled, gave a warm hello, and walked on in. Immediately, my spirit told me this would be your last time here. I felt uncomfortable, and I do not like that feeling. I smiled at Michelle, thanked her for having me over. Martin rose from his couch and smiled his contagious smile. Robert E. Lee, he said, how you doing, old man? He, he gave me a half hug. It was genuine. It seems Martin and his clique were in a deep discussion 
about politics, life, and religion. Martin is a proud Southerner, and he holds on to the past of our people. We look at the rebel, at the rebel flag differently than most people do. It means more to us than most people. We grew up here in Virginia in the history. We grew up near the battlefields. We are the real descendants of the southern states. Martin is also a Nazi sympathizer and maybe even a member of the Klan. I have suspected but never asked. Martin is deep into Christian identity and some other groups that meet regularly. My cousin wears many hats as I once did. This is one of the reasons I smirk at some of the folks on BitChute who think that I have no idea. I have no knowledge of Hitler, the Klan, Christian identity, and other things. They simply don't know me or where I come from. I don't speak of ignorance on these subjects. I speak from experience. I know and understand these beliefs because I have ran and lived with people who have lived, lived them. I have studied them and I have walked them. I know. Martin is no dummy. He's smart. He's a damn good shot too, which is why I was there. Then again, most Southern men are good shots, or at least they used to be. Hard to be a good shot when you are shooting targets on your video console. There were three other men there that day with Martin. I knew two of them, but not well. We had met through Martin a few times. There were also these people. They're like-minded with Martin. They have his same views on most everything. And two of them even know about my ministry. Martin has shared some of my videos, but certainly not all of them, and certainly uh, some of my writings when I had a website years ago. I said, I said my hellos, and, and the uncomfortable feeling would not go away. I wanted to do what I came for. I had my gear, and I wanted to go shoot. Martin's place, because it's so deep in the country, allowed me the practice of long-range shooting, meaning two, three, four hundred yards out. After a few minutes of small talk, or at least that's what it is to me, I smiled at Marty and said, let's go shoot, old son. Martin smiled and said, yep. We made our way outside and walked about an eighth of a mile. I kept thinking, damn, I'm colder than a well digger's ass out here. Everybody else had on jackets but me. Marty never did ask if I wanted to borrow one, and well, I should have asked because I'm sure he would have said yes. Anyway, we went shooting for about the better part of two hours. It was okay. I shot okay, not great, but good. They talked too much, and I wasn't there to talk. I came to shoot. The evening was coming on, and it was really getting cold on the mountain. We went back inside, and I called my wife from their landline, because where they live, you can only get cell phone reception in certain spots. <laughs> Women know things, do they not? My wife knew by my tone that I was uncomfortable, but she knew I had to stay. I declined a drink. I don't drink. I don't do dope. I've done it all in the past, and I've sold it in, in different states. But that's my past. Now, I'm just a poor old lion. We moved into the living room, which is actually bigger than my wife and I's apartment. Our apartment's only 900 square foot. Their living room had to be 1,200 square foot. I took a seat, had a wonderful cup of coffee. I said, thank you, darling, to Michelle. And I knew something was going to happen this night on this mountain. It wasn't long before it was on like Gone with the Wind. Now there are four players in this narrative besides myself. They are Martin, age 51, same as me. His best friends, Jim, late 40s, I'm not sure of his exact uh, age, he could be older. And his friend Sam, maybe about the same age. And a younger guy, uh, he looked 15 to 20 years younger, younger. his name is Owen. I'm guessing mid-30s, maybe early 30s. After a few minutes of small talk, which I do deplore, the conversation shifted as I knew it would. I hit the fast-forward button, 20 minutes, and I bring you this, and I hope you enjoy this, for it had to happen, and I knew at the end of it that others were going to hear of it. I just didn't know when. As the conversation got deeper, Sam, he hit me with it. Sam said, Rob, the problem is, your beloved King James Bible has about 30,000 errors in it, bud. And I can't stand it when people call me bud. It seems so disingenuous. The Bible had been corrupted, and like-minded people like us, he said, the true Israelites had to fix it. It was a high calling by God to correct the errors of the King James Bible. The translators and the Jews 
who were actually controlling the King James translators, is how Martin put it. Jim chimed in. Now, Jim is the the intellectual guru in this bunch. He's, ob he's obviously the leader. Martin's the more physical, but Jim, as you can tell, that he sees himself as he's superior intellectually. Jim chimed in and said, The King James Robert is filled with error after error after error. He said, Robert, and why he called me Robert, I don't know. You know, the only people that call me Robert are my wife and my mama. And if you ain't my wife and my mama, you shouldn't be calling me Robert. But I tolerate it. He said, it's no secret that the Jews wrote and or tampered with the King James Version as they have with all Bibles. I remained quiet. Eyes fixed squarely on Jim. He continued by saying the name of God has been removed from the Bible by the Jews. I remained silent. Jim said the name of Jesus is actually an insult to Yeshua. He said he loved Yeshua and it angered him when people use the name Jesus. They are actually saying Hail Zeus. He said the name Jesus may even mean earth pig. He said, Robert, I know you love Yeshua. I know your passion and hard work, but you are misled, brother. And most of your misdirection comes from your 1611 King James Bible. Another issue that Marty, my cousin, and Jim had with me was my treatment of my white brothers and sisters. Marty referenced my video of three months ago, of three months ago that I put on uh, BitChute about psychological warfare on white people. Marty said what a great video it was. Mar Marty watched it. I, I sent him a link. He said, however, Rob Lee, it was tainted. By the last 15 minutes, when you attacked your white brothers and, and br brothers and sisters, especially the white men, for no reason. Jim chimed in. Robert, many of them are doing the best they can, and they're far stronger and prepared than what you give them credit for. Jim said he could not share it on Rumble or view it in his meetings because of the last 15 minutes. You see, again, Jim is the intellectual leader of this group and a larger group that I'm not a part of, nor would I want to be. When I pulled up, I parked my old battered Jeep across from Jim's new $75,000 truck. Uh, I don't know how much it is, I'm guessing, but uh, it's 2022, 20, man, and it's brand new and it's nice. Jim is the kind of guy when he goes to the bathroom, he figures there must be gold in his shit, you see. I'm the kind of man who thanks God for allowing me to go to the bathroom. Jim is an educated man. He went to a state college, and he speaks as a man who knows what he's talking about. I knew he seen himself as a Christian identity st student, teacher, and intellectually superior to me and most people. In fact, he was superior to me in terms of knowledge about a lot of things. I'm not educated. I grew up in the streets, and I was locked up for over a year by age 15. I was one of the people, one of the youngest people ever where I live to be locked up. It's true. I'm not well-spoken. I don't have a vast amount of knowledge. I struggle with dates, times, and places, and the holy word really bad. Sometimes I can't even pronounce them. I just go on. Jim also stated that it's sometimes tough to watch my videos because of my quoting the 1611 King James Bible when he knows that most of what I'm quoting is corrupt and tainted. I figured we might as well let it all out. I said with a smile, and of course my views on Hitler and his followers. Jim took on an ultra serious manner. Robert, that confuses me and others more than anything. Why can you not see that Adolf Hitler was your brother and fought the good fight? Robert, he said, you could have a much larger following if you would take my advice and number one, See that Adolf Hitler was a great man. And number two, stop being so hard on your fellow white man. 30 more minutes went by, and I had not said a lot. We talked about COVID, the synagogue of Satan, hunting, and Jim's $75,000 truck. And then I made my play. I said, we are all Israelite brothers, are we not? They smiled and said, yes, exactly right, we are. And we should be agreeing and on the same page and on the same side. I looked at the guys and I said, how do you know each of you are Israelites? I'm just asking, how do you know if you're a full-blown 100% Israelite? Sam spoke up and said, because I'm white. 
I, I shot back. Prove it. He looked at me again. I said again, how do you know how white you are? I knew he was getting pissed. I said, how do any of you know before God how pure your line is? With all the fornicating in this world, are you telling me that it is inconceivable for you to have 5% Indian, Latino, or black in your line? I went deeper. I said, maybe 10, 12%, maybe just 1%. But I said, according to what you have told me, that if you only have even a tiny, minute amount of any other blood in you, you cannot be an Israelite. I said, I have spoken out against the enemy and defended white people far more than most. I fully understand how white people feel. However, with that being said, I cannot and will not lie. I looked at the young man, the young white man named Owen. He sat up straight. I could tell he was taking all this in with great attention. I felt sympathy for him. He wants to know his heritage, his race, his history. He wants to know the truth about this world. I know he's been told lie after lie from time to time he was born about NASA, about the moon landings, about history, diseases, and so, so much more. He's been taught lies, but he's also been taught great lies about God, Jesus, and the Holy Bible. You see, it's hard to find the truth when there's a nonstop campaign of outright lies to suppress the truth. I paused and said calmly, can any of you prove that you are 100% white? I said, I know you're all Christian identity followers. Now, you've quoted my father's word that no bastard will enter his congregation, and yet you have no way of knowing if you even have one tiny percent of any other race in you. They had no idea the point that I was about to make. I said, the Bible says that if we have just a fragment, we can't be Israelites. They nodded in, in unison. Sam said in a loud voice, it's a fact. No mamzer, which means mongrel or bastard, can be an Israelite. Sam said, and I quote, it's written. He had no idea that after he said that I was going to snap his neck and piss all over him in just a few minutes like a male lion does, a hyena. I spoke with great confidence and strength and I said this, how can you believe that, Sam? When all of you have just admitted the Bible is corrupt and cannot be trusted. You could hear a pin drop. I paused and said, how can you quote anything from the Bible when by your own admissions you have flatly denied and rejected the Bible being perfect? I put my eyes on all four men. I raised my eyebrows. Martin looked at Jim for some sort of an answer. His comment had opened the door. You see, Sam, when he made the comment, he had opened the door, and I didn't push it open. I kicked that son of a bitch wide open. I went back to the race question of who's an Israelite. I looked at all four men. I said, listen, I know the verses about race mixing, but how can you quote them when you say the Bible is not true? They had no way to come back. Nothing, nada. I know there are many times when certain people have taken God's word and created their own doctrine out of it, and it is completely contrary to God Almighty. I said, you guys don't even use the name Jesus. You deny the Bible's truth. You use this name called Yahweh, but you're quoting the Bible to prove a point about race mixing and being an Israelite. Young Owen spoke up trying to help his so-called teachers who were going to be broken and pissed on very shortly. Owen said, Jesus is not his name. His name is Yahshua Hamashiach. And the way he said the word Mashiach reminded me of a New Yorker in the synagogue of Satan, even though this young man was from central Virginia. I thought to myself, they have our people using their filthy accents when describing Jesus Christ who they're not even calling by his right name. I'll never use the words of the devil's children if I can help it to describe anything. I smiled calmly at this young man. He's young to me. He's in his 30s. I'm 51. I looked at the young man and I asked him, how do you know his name is Yahshua Mashiach? And I said it with as much southern accent as I could muster. 
so I wouldn't have to repeat that filthy accent of the devil's children. I said, how do you know his name? Young Owen seemed confused and repeated the question back to me. I said, how do you know the name of God's son? I was kind to him. He said, Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. I said, young brother, that's not what I'm asking you. How do you know as a man the name of God's son? Did God send angels to tell you or what? I'm asking you how you came to this knowledge. He said, well, Jim, Marty, and others showed him the truth about his race. Even this answer was devoid of any substance, for this is not what I asked him. I knew he was confused and tripping over himself. I did not want to injure or embarrass him in, in any manner. I smiled and politely said, young brother, you never did answer me about if you were a real Israelite. He sighed, and again, he gave a glance to Jim, his teacher. I said, answer me this, Owen. Who would know if you, you as a man, are 100% Israelite? He said, my family would know. I said, no family really knows how far they go back. I said, who would be the ultimate source on if you are truly 100% Israelite? He spoke up as if he had the answer. He said, I have no problem getting a DNA test. I looked at the young brother eye to eye and I said, only the naive would believe anything this, the synagogue of Satan tells them. Owen seemed confused again and he said, so all the DNA tests are wrong. I said, all the DNA tests are ran and controlled by the synagogue of Satan. They can make them say anything they choose. Then I hit him with the truth that I know pierced his young soul. I said, young brother, as I looked at him eye to eye, the only one who knows if you are 100% Israelite is God and nobody else. Nobody on this earth knows if you are an Israelite but God. The look on his face will remain with me forever. In his 10 years of studying Christian identity, he had never ever thought of this truth, nor had his so-called so teachers. I let Owen slowly sit back on the couch. I had no desire to snap his neck and urinate on him. He was young. He may be of my family. He had that look in his eyes. I know that look. He had a tone in his voice. I know that tone. It says, I belong to Jesus Christ, and I need a brother from God to come help me. I turned my attention back to Jim, the guru of the group, and said, Jim, you said earlier the Jews removed the name of God from the Bible. He snapped back. They sure did. I said, Jim, has it ever occurred to you, to the sacred name believers, the atheists, and everybody else, that Almighty God removed his name himself from his word? I smiled at Jim. I said, Jim, do you really believe that anyone or anything could do anything to injure God, his promises, and his love for his children? I got louder. Are you really saying that you believe that the Jews, the devil, and all evil can run amok and God has no control over them? I continued the pounding and said, who really has the power to remove God's name from anything unless God wants them to or allows them to? My father removed his name and replaced it with another name that he said is the most important. My father said the most important name in heaven and earth is Jesus and none other. God gave us Jesus, a part of himself, and said, this is the name that would be above all names. He did not say Yeshua, Hamashiach. He said Jesus to the English-speaking people. The look on their faces, faces that day was priceless. I knew the Spirit of God had moved me to say it. I smiled on the inside and thanked my Almighty Father. They had no idea how to come back, but they had no idea that I was only getting started. My comments had caused them to just stare as if to say, we've never considered such logic before. Even the educated Jim had no comeback. I looked at all four men and I asked them a direct question to see if they had any real knowledge of this name game deception. I said, where did this sacred name game begin? Martin said, don't know, do tell me. Martin was pissed. I was calling out he and his friends. It must be hard getting your neck snapped and pissed on. Well, you shouldn't question my father. I wouldn't snap your neck and piss on you. I said it started in the late 1920s. 
A man named C.O. Dodd, the founder of this movement in the late 1920s, broke off from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, the SDA Church was nothing more than a front for the synagogue of Satan. Now, this man, C.O. Dodd, began publishing the Faith magazine starting in 1937 to promote his views. Now, this movement started with the formation of a group in Holt, Michigan, and they were the Yahwehist. You see, they started promoting this name called Yahweh. The leaders of this group claimed that the founding member was visited by two angels who explained that the Messiah's name is not Jesus, but Yeshua. Now, before this, white people, my people, never called God any of these names. They never called Jesus anything other than Jesus. Now, who do you think is behind this movement to destroy the name of Jesus? The devil himself to destroy the most powerful name in heaven and earth. The devil himself. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was confronted by the devil, he was tempted. For 40 days and for 40 nights, Jesus fasted. The devil came to him. Jesus refuted the devil three times with what? The word. The word of who? The word of Almighty God. I turned my attention to Jim and his Hitler comment. Jim, I said, you told me Hitler was a great man. Now, I'm not going to debate you if Hitler was great because great, just as beauty, is purely in the eye of the beholder. Yet I ask two simple questions because I know you are an authority on the life and times of Hitler. Jim nodded slowly, wondering if his neck was next, and you're damn right it was. Indeed, it was, and all of these men were, were to hear and feel truths they'd never thought about in their life. I said, Jim, we're told Hitler was anti-Jew. Then, Jim, why did Hitler have a Jewish doctor? I seen Jim gulp slightly. Robert, he replied, I've been asked that before, and I don't have an exact answer for you or anyone else. I don't believe him, quite frankly, but he said it. He continued, I can only surmise that the Fuhrer wanted and deserved the best doctor he could have, and this Jewish doctor was the best. I smirked at Jim and said, Bullshit! I sat up and was on the edge of the chair, and what I said destroyed this man's argument so completely that he will avoid it for the remainder of his life. I said, Jim, Hitler said the Germans were the master race, and you mean the master race? There was not one freaking doctor better than this Jew Jewish doctor? Is that, what, is, that your, is that what you're telling me, Jim? Jim looked defeated. But I was not done with the Hitler point. However, I had no intention of, of dragging it out. I said, I'm not going to go into who funded Hitler, even though in 1929 he was broke. And where does one get tens of millions of dollars at? Mm, we don't have to go into it. I just have a simple question for all of you. For you, Jim, for you, Martin, for you, Owen, and for you, Sam. One question about Hitler. Men, I ask you this with all seriousness. The room was silent. You could feel the tension. I said, if at 3 a.m. tonight, five gangbangers broke into your home and drugged your wife and children outside, and if they were beating the dog shit out of them and raping them, what would you do if you were asleep on the couch and you woke up to this? All, all four of them looked at me like, what the hell? Martin looked at me with wide eyes. I could see he was angry and yet unsure of where is, is, is this going? He said, I'd go outside and kill every last bleep, bleep one of them. I said, I know you would, because my blood is in you. Michelle and your girls would expect you to come outside and either kill for them or die with them. You would die together like a family. I raised my voice to Martin and said, you know, Martin, you could escape out the back door on, on your four-wheeler up into the mountains. Nobody would know. I said, you have a gun next to you right now. It'd be no problem to blow your brains out and avoid the hell altogether. Now, I'm asking all of you, what would you think about any man that would refuse to fight for his family and die with them when they're being brutally murdered, butchered, and raped right outside the mother effing door? I said, any man who will do this is not a man and should never die so the world can see what a complete loser and chicken shit coward looks like. And I said, this is exactly what your Fuhrer, Hitler, did. I said, you know, Jim, 
to show the vast stupidity of the Hitler horse and the CIA pe pe people, when I posed these questions to them on BitChute, the best they could come back with was to call me a Jew. Now, I've spoken out against the Jews far more than these bleepity bleep mothers will ever do. I said, Jim, you told me before that you believed Hitler escaped by submarine to South America. He nodded and then said yes in a very soft tone. I said, Jim, 100 yards from Hitler's bunker in Berlin, the evil and sadistic Red Army was murdering, raping, and torturing men, women, and little children. And this pathetic excuse of a man hid as this was going on. And then, Jim, either one of two things happened, Jim. Either he did escape, or he blew his brains out after taking cyanide. To my surprise, Jim mustered up a rebuttal, and his rebuttal was so weak and twisted, it is the epitome of the Hitler horse. Jim said, Robert, the Fuhrer and his people did not want the Russians to have his body made a mockery of. You know, at another time in history, Jim's answer would have been worthy of receiving a blade right through his heart. Right through his heart. Instead, I took the breath from this man with the truth. I said, dude, do you really understand what you're saying? I leaned closer, and I decided not to yell, but I grumbled. And I said, what about the motherfucking mockery being made of the women and children who were being brutally raped, tur tortured, and murdered right outside the bunker, Jim? I sat back. I seen Jim's face. I dared this so-called educated man to defend this monster. I glanced at Martin. He wouldn't look at me. I knew we were done forever. The, the guy called Sam was playing with his phone, and the young man named Owen was looking at me as I snapped necks and pissed on people. I looked at Owen, and to, and to make a point and to name a point, I looked at him and said, Young brother, what do you think about all this? His reply was this. I don't know, he said. Never thought about it like that before. I gave a kind grin to him and nodded, yes, I know. I had one more point to make. And it would be made one way or another. Because I had given them 45 minutes to an hour of my time to hear them degrade, lie, and talk shit about what is sacred to me. And you were going to hear it. Now, if all four of you have to get it, you're going to have to get it. In any way that you want, boys. It had to do with the Bible being wrong. I said, Jim, I know there are 225 translations of the Bible, yet all of them, every single one, are taken from the 1611 King James. They copy the 1611 King James, and then by law, they have to change a certain amount of words to get a copyright so they can make some money. And they remove, move, they remove such things as Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and they inject such words as Yeshua, Yahweh, and other lies and bullshit. Why do you think that is, Jim? Jim had no comeback. Jim had nothing else to say. I looked at all of them and I said, How do you people believe that an omniscient, almighty creator cannot preserve his word? The only way that you or any person or race can believe this is if they do not know him. If they don't know the Father, then you don't know the Son, Jesus. You don't need to learn Greek or Hebrew. You don't need Bible college or seminary. Sinful devils and liars and cons wish to have something over others. So they use this device to bring men under their control by wielding over them the, this idea that they know the original language. Therefore, they must be special and they have sacred language. The same thing that people do with so-called sacred books. The Lost Book of Thomas, the Lost Book of en Enoch, and all this other lies and bullshit. They're made up because it gives people power. Look what we have that you don't have. You need this. When God says, look, this is really all you need right here. God gave us his word in our language and told us the Holy Spirit is our teacher. God told us to follow Jesus. We are the flock of Jesus. We are not the flock of Yeshua. We are not the flock of Yahweh, Yahushua, none of that shit. We are the flock of Jesus Christ. And there is a war against one name, Jesus. 
and the culture that has once revolved around Jesus. There is a war against the heritage and the history of these same people that was once called Christendom, Jesus Christ. There is a movement to destroy and remove the name of Jesus from the tongues of the people and replace it with something else, something fake, something foreign, something from the damn devil. I said, fellows, I know the word Jah and Jehovah is in the Bible. I call my father, father. It's intimate and personal, for I am his son. I call Jesus, Jesus. I also call him master, king, best friend, and I call him my life. Now, Jim, either you lied or you spoke in great error this evening. You said that Jesus may mean earth pig. And I thought about this for a minute. I thought, how can a man who's educated be this easily fooled? Or is he just flat out lying? I said, Jim, this is easily debunked. And many of God's children have already debunked this horse shit. So let me help you with this. And from now on, you'll have no reason to spread such a lie. Liars have claimed that, that the word J-E in Latin means earth, and the word S-U-S means pig. Now this means Jesus in Latin to them translates to earth pig. This is both sickening and patently false. First of all, there is no J-E in Latin. You can look this up, man, in a Latin dictionary. Go to latindictionary.net. It's easy to find out. You see... The lies that the devil and his family tells about Jesus, if, if somebody would just be willing to take a little bit of time, you can easily debunk this horse shit. Secondly, Jim, you'll find absolutely no word related to earth in the Latin language that even has the letter J, let alone the letters J-E. Jim stared hard. You see, the educated man was being educated by a lowly lion of God. Secondly, Jim, while the S-U-S is the Latin word for pig, claiming that three letters of a name or a word can be broken off into a definition is a lie from hell. If it were true, Jim, consider this. This, this would also mean that any other word in Latin that contains S-U-S, and there are like 600 of them, would also apply to a pig, such as the word, and I use what I have remembered to debunk people, Arasus. It's A-U-R-O-S-U-S. -S. Now, this means gold-bearing. Now, you see, Jim, the definition has nothing to do with pig, but there's the S-U-S -S in it. Where's the pig in it? You see, the word Jesus has nothing to do with earth or pig. It's just the most powerful and mighty name in heaven and in earth. Now, you and others have said that a whopping 30,000 eras are in the King James Version. I smiled at this sheer stupidity. But one, after a while, you expect this from non-believers posing as believers. If one part of the Holy Word is wrong, then would we not logically con conclude that all of it's wrong and conclude that, you know what, God made a mistake. In fact, God made 30,000 mistakes. And if this is the case, wouldn't God cease to be God? Are we to believe that God made great promises, promises and failed to keep them? Jim, I know you, Martin, Sam, and I, I, I guess Owen, all of you guys follow Christian identity. And I've shared with you where this originated and who is behind it. I want to say a word to you about William Fink. Now, William Fink is the, the guru and hero for many of these people. But who is William Fink? William Fink is a former cop in, in New Jersey. He was convicted of killing an inmate at his jail. He stood by as two of his jailers killed a man. But see, I guess it doesn't matter to you, Jim, because the man that was killed, he was just a Puerto Rican. So it doesn't really matter. Right, Jim? Right, Martin? It doesn't matter. He's just a Puerto Rican. Now, William Fink leaves prison after a very short term, and on his release, he becomes a teacher of the true Israelites. I smiled at Jim and Martin and said, who would believe that this lying sack of dung was not recruited by the synagogue of Satan? William Fink actually rewrote the Bible. Yes, folks, he rewrote the Bible. It seems that when he was in prison, he became a Greek scholar. Now, the Christian identity people call themselves the true Israelites because they are white. Now, it is true the original Israelites were white. However, 
there are very few white people walking today that are actually related to the man Jacob Israel. You see, these people cannot pronounce the name of Jesus right. They call the Father some made-up name called Yahweh. They believe the Bible is false. They believe that William Fink's version of the Bible is true, but God Almighty's is false. Now, these are the true Israelites, Jim. They believe also that God cannot have any other cannot have any love for any other race, person, or creed, or color except for them. You see, they do not understand what Jesus Christ meant when he said, said, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All they had to do was keep a reading, you see. But it, it, it can't, you can't help to understand what this shit is wrong with you people, man. What's wrong with you? Because you just got through saying you don't believe the Bible, but yet you take parts of it to actually lie and to try to make a point. The truth is God is not showing you or these people much love at all. If he was, he would, he would not allow them to follow the devil. Funny is it not that these people, the Nazi people, the Christian identity people, they will scream Jews, 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 yet they believe the exact same thing as the Jews about God, the Father, Jesus, and his holy word. The same thing goes for the Judeo-Christian mental cases. Most of them are Trump supporters. They've been taught the 1611 King James Version is incorrect, God failed, and they have to use another Bible. The Bible condemns their sacred and false God called the synagogue of Satan and the chosen lie of these devils. What do Jews, Masons, Muslims, Hitler junkies, Maga whores, Christian identity, Judeo-Christian mental cases, and all religions and beliefs have in common? They all have one thing in common. They believe the Bible is corrupt, the 1611 King James is corrupt, and therefore wrong. Well, Jim, Martin, Sam, and all the rest, you're in damn good company when you share the same beliefs as th these groups do. Going back a thousand years, men, women, and nations have preserved things of the ancient days. In our history, we have seen ancient paintings, writings, carvings, coins, and so much more preserved for thousands of years. In fact, the oldest, the oldest known coin available for viewing today is located in the British Museum. The coin is more than 2,700 years old and was discovered in Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is where the book of Ephesians was written to. Still here, after almost 3,000 years, paintings unchanged in thousands of years, there are castles and structures all over this earth that are thousands of years old, if not more. They're still here. These relics are unchanged, frozen in time, and still here today. We know this is true, and people acknowledge it. However, the same people believe and spew one of the grossest lies ever forced on people. They believe that an almighty, all-powerful creator could not preserve his word, his written word, for those whom he loves. And I reckon what it comes down to is the Father said in his word, not all people are mine, you see. And we see this old world really starting to shake right now. We will clearly see who belongs to Jesus and who belongs to the damn devil. God created every molecule and every cell that we know of and the world that we cannot begin to comprehend. And you have pussycat boys on the internet screaming how God, Jesus, and the Bible are fake. Just as God said in the last days, wolves in sheep's clothing and seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, we are in that time. And yet these are the same people that scream. These are the same people that don't know how their Chinese cell phone works. They don't know the crystals involved. They have no idea how it works. But they feel okay to question, denounce, and mock God, Jesus, and his holy word. These are the same pussies that actually wonder why they're being beat up and losing everything they have. I wonder why, fellas. I wonder why. How long do you think you can mock God before God says, I'm going to show you a little something? God gave his people the 1611 King James Bible. And it has served our people well for over 400 years and will do so till the end. The war on the Bible, the Bible's authenticity comes from the synagogue of Satan and stems from their deity, the devil. All people who promote this are our antichrist. They're all on the same team, same team. One big tribe of liars, cowards, and filthy devils that are going to be severely battered. 
Now to my family on YouTube and BitChute, I share these four verses with you as we close. John 1.12 But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And what is his name? Jesus is his name. Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. One name, Jesus. Philippians 2, verses 9-10, through 10, Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Matthew 121 And she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Brothers and sisters you don't call on any name for any help but Jesus. Nobody loves you like your father and Jesus. If the world wants to call on a thousand other names, let them call on it. We will live, follow, and call on the most beautiful name there is in heaven and on earth. His name is Jesus.